Hello whiskey fans, got a little bit of deja vu here. Very recently reviewed the Lafroy Carchis, which is their festival bottling, and immediately after we've got another very special release from Lafroy. This is Lafroy 10 year old cask strength. So this is similar to the, the standard Lafroy 10 year old, but bottled at an ABV of 60.1%. It's nice. <coughs> of course, I was just messing around there. Although, it has to be said, this is very strong stuff at 60.1%. So possibly not one for people starting off on their whiskey journey. But the Lafroy 10 year old cask strength is a really popular one. It's one that I um, keep an eye out myself, to be honest. Especially for us here in the UK, because Lafroy do screw us over a little bit when it comes to their 10 year old, in the way that they bottle it for the UK market at 40%, whereas I believe in the US and possibly other countries, it's bottled at a much more flavoursome ABV 43. So if you want to experience Lafroy in all of its glory, this is the perfect chance to do so, especially in the UK where you haven't really got much alternative. So first things first, let's have a look at the label. So obviously the things we're looking for are an age statement and whether or not it is natural colour and whether it's non-chill filtered. So age statement, brilliant, 10 years old, at least 10 years old. And in terms of non-chill filtered, it does mention barrier filtered this time, which it didn't on the carches. So that's good. But there's still no mention as to whether they've put artificial colours in this. And if they have, to be honest, that's going to piss me off a little bit. Because the 10-year-old cask strength is not a mass-produced consumer whiskey. This is for people that like their whiskey and they want to enjoy it in the best way possible. So if they are colouring this, then I just don't know why. But hopefully they're not. I also notice on the label that it does say one of the most richly flavoured of all Scotch whiskies. Now I'm not sure when they changed this, but I know for a fact that Lafroig used to put the most richly flavoured of all Scotch whiskies on the label. So that's obviously changed at some point. I don't know if someone got into a little bit of trouble there. But I am quite pleased to see that they've changed that because there's definitely a couple of distilleries, at least a couple on Isla that I can think of, that would probably take dispute to that claim. If you think you might know which ones I'm talking about, let me know in the comments and we'll see if we agree on that one. One more thing on the label which is really strange. It does say on the back, we recommend that you add twice as much water as whiskey to fully appreciate the taste characteristics. Now, fair enough, advising people that adding a bit of water to a 60% whiskey might be a good idea, yep. Yeah. But if you add twice as much water to whiskey as they're saying, say you've got 100 millilitres of 60% whiskey, you've got 60 millilitres of alcohol in there and 40 millilitres of water. So if you add twice as much water to that, it's going to be 200 millilitres if you've got a glass of 100 ml of whiskey. So you're going to end up with 60 ml of alcohol in 240 ml total. So it's going to give you something around the strength of a strong wine. Now I don't know if they've got a little bit confused with the label there. I'm thinking perhaps they meant to add twice as much whiskey to water, which would make a lot more sense because that would knock it down to around 40%. But even then, do we really buy cask strength Lafroy so that we can do the job ourselves of watering it down to 40%. Is that really why we buy this? It just seems a little bit odd. We'll also mention that at 60.1%, this is the strongest release of 10-year-old Lafroy cask strength yet. Anyone that has been paying attention might be able to tell me that the, the weakest ever bottling of 10-year-old cask strength was batch 3 at 55.3% in 2011. 
it'd be really interesting to do an A-B comparison of some of the stronger ones and some of the weaker ones. So you would think that the lower the ABV, the cask has obviously done a quicker job of the maturation. Assuming that all of these whiskies are 10 years old and stored in similar conditions, it'd be interesting to see what correlation you've got between the flavours and the, the loss in ABV. So obviously with the Laphroaig you're getting a heavy smokiness and there is a little bit of a ashy, almost ashtray note but generally it's a very sweet smokiness lovely sweet vanilla peat as you often get in Laphroaig Laphroaig, unless they've changed their policies recently do use exclusively first fill bourbon casks for their maturation for their standard bottlings, obviously it's different for your triple wood and things like that. And those first fill bourbon casks do tend to impart a lot of sweetness and vanilla caramel notes, and you're definitely getting that here. Also getting something that I really like, which is um, a lot of cereal barley notes, malted barley. Obviously peated barley. Very gristy. As I've said before, it's always nice when the cask doesn't cover up that underlying barley grist note. Something that's a little bit unexpected, it's also quite floral. Quite a nice delicate floral note, almost a little bit of palmer violet. Which is not something that I've experienced a lot, if at all, in a Laphroaig. I've also got some lovely seashore notes, sort of rock pools, seaweed, salt water, brine. Lovely. And some mint and cloves, very medicinal. So, on the palate. Now, I am tasting this at full strength. So I'm being a little bit careful when I'm nosing, not taking huge deep breaths. And that was quite a small sip there as well, but immediately it's coating my palate, coating my taste buds. And it's very similar to the nose, it must be said. So you've got that sweet vanilla peat, which you always get from Laphroaig, well certainly these days. Not so much in the past, but the last few years you're getting a lot of influence from those fresh bourbon casks. And again, lots of brine, salt water, seaweed. Really is a product of the place that it's made. It's that word that distillers love to use these last few years, terroir. It's the influence of the place on the product. So is it actually the, the rock pools and the sea and the brine that have made their way into the whiskey? Or is it just a little bit of coincidence and a little bit of rose tinted glasses. It's hard to say, but it's definitely in there. Also getting quite a lot of sweet notes. And it's more than your usual bourbon sweetness. It's really a golden syrup note. Long sweet finish, herbal, medicinal. It's a little bit of a fisherman's friend medicinal quality as well which really is something that you generally tend to associate with Beaumont Distillery rather than Laphroaig. But it works very well, it's very pleasant. I think it has got more character than some of the, the recent batches of the 10 year old cask strength. Some of the ones over the last two or three years have been a little bit on the sweet and simple side. This has got a little bit more character, it's got a little bit more guts to it. So one of the first things that I thought about this whiskey when I decided to buy it is how it's going to compare to the 2020 Karchis. And I'm going to get straight to the point. I'm going to give this whiskey a B+, which is the same grade that I gave to the Karchis bottling. If I had to choose one of the two, which would I go for? It's really difficult. In terms of quality, I think they're completely evenly matched. It really depends on your preference and what you're looking for. If you're looking for something a little bit different, I would say go for the Karchis. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more jack-of-all-trades and a little bit more of a 
universal crowd pleaser, I think I'd probably go with this one because there's really nothing to dislike about this whiskey here. What I'm going to do now, in true Blue Peter style, I'm going to put this one aside, this full strength one. And here is one I prepared earlier with a dropping lid. So this one I have watered down to 52%. And it's not a random number, it's the same strength as the Karchis bottling. So it'll be interesting to compare apples to apples and see how the water has affected the whiskey and how it compares to the other bottling at the same strength. And that's interesting. I think on the nose, the slight reduction in strength has brought more of those floral notes out. So it's still very strong at 52%. Yeah, it's a little bit less intensity from the peat and a little bit more floral. That's still creeping and you have got that medicinal peatiness. A little bit of mint, which is something that I think is quite common in Laphroaig's at, at higher strength. And a little bit of clove. So let's see what the palette's like. Mm. I think on the palate, the water has brought a little bit more of the, the salty, briny, saline notes out. And again, when you first try it diluted with a little bit of water, you think that it's reduced the intensity, but that big hit of smoky medicinal peat rushes in at the end and sort of reassures you. I would say that 52% is probably a good drinking strength for this one. It's a very well matured, well integrated whiskey and it is perfectly palatable at 52%. And if you're used to your cask strength whiskies, there's nothing wrong with drinking it at full strength either. Yeah, beautiful. And it'd be a little bit silly to stop there. Here is another one that I prepared earlier. <clears throat> so this one has been diluted to 46%. So this is the sort of strength that I would normally look for in a whiskey. And just looking at the colour and appearance of that, I can't actually see any haziness, no scotch mist at all. That could be because we're right on the limit of where haziness is going to appear there at 46%. It does say barrier filtered. So I would expect if you put a little bit more water in there, you would get some haziness. So I'm smelling some more, more sort of funky notes now. A little bit of damp oak. A little bit of mustiness coming out. Also a little bit of cheesy aroma to it. It's normally something you'd associate with a pork cask, which And they may have put some port matured whiskey into this one, but I don't think that's usually the case. They usually do go for a bourbon maturation on the 10 year old cask strength. So palate at 46%. The mouthfeel has declined enormously. It does seem quite thin compared to the 52% now drinking this at 46%, but it's still got plenty of flavor. But I think I would say 52% is about the right strength to drink this one. So I've got one last little experiment here. This is another glass and I've watered this one down with a hell of a lot of water right down to 40%. So this is the same strength that you would get in the, the standard 10 year old that you can buy in shops and supermarkets pretty much everywhere. So let's see how it compares. So straight away that nose is not as I remember the, the standard 10 year old to be honest. It's got a little bit more of a chemically paraffin note. As well as lots of smokiness, there is definitely a lot of peat there. And watering this down right to 40% has brought out some lemony notes as well. So that's interesting. So it's not definitely not the same as the 40% 10 year old. That could be because the casks that they use for the 10 year old are specifically picked to be ones that will perform better at the low ABV. 
That's definitely made it much fruitier. Let's try the palette. So that is much, much waterier than any of the other dilutions that I've just done. Really has destroyed the mouthfeel and it's lost so much flavour, especially the, the very early palette is very weak. But as before, you do get some peatiness building up over time. The finish is actually not too bad at 40%. You've got a lovely growing warm peatiness. Again, a sweet vanilla peat, but also some warming sort of peat fire, burnt peat notes. But it is such a shame to water this down. Definitely not to 20% as they're suggesting on the label, but not even 40% either. It'd be criminal to buy a bottle of this and drink the whole thing at 40%. Really needs to be around the 50% mark in my opinion. And it just highlights how hard done to we are here in the UK that Lefroy could choose to bottle their whiskey, which they describe with no hint of irony at all as one of the most richly flavoured of all Scotch whiskies, and then they go and dilute the stuff in their own home country, the United Kingdom, down to the absolute bare minimum of strength and flavour. I really do hope that one day they'll make amends and up the ABV to 43% as they have done in other markets. But as I said, I'm going to put this one away because it's incredibly disappointing. I'm going to bring back the lovely 60%. Mm. So you've got a lot of sweet caramel notes in there on the nose that just completely disappeared. And it's the intensity, the intensity of the sweetness and the intensity of the peat. It just dies completely when you get to those low ABVs. I'm gonna take one more sip. Hmm. It's just more in every way. Peaty, smokier, sweeter, more intense, better mouthfeel. If you like Laphroaig at all, then you have to buy a bottle of the 10 year old cask strength. If you've never had it before, it's an essential purchase. If you're not used to cask strength whiskies, maybe try it at 45, 46% to start with and work your way up. It's definitely worth every penny. B plus. Cheers.